Good morning folks, it's a lovely sunny day. We're at the end of June and because it was such a nice night last night I thought I'd get the moth trap out again. It's, it was just the right sort of weather for moths to be flying, I could tell because there was lots of um, flies and midges and things buzzing around. So we're going to dive into the trap and see what uh, see what we've got. If you do fancy having a go at doing this yourself, there's quite a few um, easy ways you can set that up. You might have a look at my other video where I talk about it a little bit more. Um, the identification stuff at first is a little bit daunting because there are so many species. And what I find is every year I get rusty. I kind of um, forget the species that I've seen the year before and have to learn them again. But it kind of gets tucked away in there somewhere. And what helps, even though there are... Um, uh, hundreds of different species what helps is that they come at different times of year so you've got a bit of seasonality and you've also got um, some that are very rare so you can kind of narrow it down a little bit um, on the other hand what makes it tricky is that some species you have to look very closely at maybe even down with a microscope to tell them apart and some species have quite a lot of colour variation or pattern variation and also another additional complication is that some of them wear as well so the scales if you look very closely at moths and butterflies at their wings they're covered in scales and those can wear off and change the patterns as well so that makes it tricky but um, they're such beautiful creatures it's it's well worth having a go at doing it um, I noticed that up on the side of my shed here I've, I've got some um, moths that are tucked away trying to remain camouflaged we might have a little look at those in a minute but shall we have a look in the trap let's see what we've got oh right straight away before i even oh <laughs> we've got some lovely moths oh fantastic oh it's so good folks we have got loads in here okay I'm just going to have to show you some of the highlights because there are so many moths to identify in here. Amazing. Um, right. There's some on there, but I'm going to... I'm probably going to show you the best things first. Moths come in all shapes and sizes, all different colours, and the biggest and most spectacular ones are the hawk moths. And right here, sitting at the top of the trap, are two, which are fantastic. So in here are some egg boxes, and nestling in this egg box, we've got, oh, we've got so many beautiful moths to show you. Gosh, right. Look at this. Can you see that? Don't know how close the focus is. So we've got a privet hawk moth there and an elephant hawk moth there. Two beautiful, colourful species. The abdomen of the privet hawk moth is a beautiful pink colour. Oh, we've got a little micro moth there, which I'm not going to try and identify straight away, if at all. Might fly, might leave us. Um, but also on the back here, we've got another one that's one of my favourite. We've got burnished brass moth called burnished brass it's got this lovely iridescent green color don't know how well the camera picks up that detail so three absolute beauties there that's fantastic really lovely to see oh the elephant hawk moth's gonna go starting to warm his wings up Pop him down over there. Oh, right. I should be making a note of all of these. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put that to one side and go back through them after I've shown you some of these highlights. Now, I've shown you the most specta spectacular ones first, but gosh, we've got lots in here to go through. Right. Ooh. 
lovely. So, just going to bring this up to show you, so you can see. We've got a white ermine. A flame shoulder. I always like that name. It's like a, it's like a go faster stripes on on an old Ford Capri, with those stripes down the side. You see that one? Just there. It's called a flame shoulder. And then this one here. There's quite a lot that look like this, but this one I think is called the Lickness, and the Lickness means I think it's Latin or Greek for the lamp. I don't know why it's called that, but a lot of these um, were named by Victorian naturalists and given these fantastic, um, fantastic names. We've got all sorts of hilarious um, common names. Right, so what I should be doing is writing all of these down, and then what I should do with these is, uh, once I've written that, once I've recorded them, um, I should tell somebody. So what the there's several ways you can do that and it's really important that you do do it because the things that you find vent oh there goes the elephant hawk moth off he goes yeah good zigzagging flight so he didn't get caught by a bird um i forgot what i was saying there oh yes yeah, submitting records yes it's really important that you tell somebody what you're seeing and it's really easy easy to do it the one of the ways you can do it um, is to contact your local wildlife trust. So here in Cornwall, it's the Cornwall Wildlife Trust. Um, they have a, a um, an office called the Environmental Records Centre, which records all wildlife sightings, which then go into national databases. And that helps conservationists to do their work. So it's really important to tell um, to tell them what you're seeing. And also... In Cornwall we're very lucky because we've got the Wildlife Information Service so if you're having problems with identification um, they can help you with identification point you in the right direction there's usually lots of um, keen amateur naturalists out there that will help you with your identification moths for example there's lots of keen moth enthusiasts that will help you so um, oh yeah what thing the other thing I was going to say is you you can download an app now uh, we've got an app for Cornwall called Orks O-R-K-S which you can record your wildlife sightings in take a photograph and then upload your data where you are who you are what you've seen all in one go and so it's a really effective way of, of telling the Environmental Record Centre what you've been seeing so you can put it on your phone send all your records in um, or you can do it the old way which is write, write it down on a piece of paper and uh, and that can be submitted as well. Right, should we have a little look and see what else we've got in here? I'm trying to think of one I can show you that's... Oh look, <laughs> there's another elephant hawk moth. I'll see if I can get that one out. The last one was a little bit faded. This one looks a little bit fresher. What happens over time is that the moths lose their... scales and the colors fade but this one is a beautiful fresh one spectacular colors look at that can you see that absolutely stunning look at that pattern that coloration you'd think that would make them quite hard make it quite hard for them to to um, remain undiscovered during the day but actually in amongst dead leaves that's a surprisingly effective camouflage gosh how beautiful is that this little one oh <laughs> Oh, gosh, right, distracted by another hawk moth. Look at that, that's a poplar hawk moth. Wow. Amazing. Brilliant camouflage. Oh, bright line brown eye.
heart and dart. And then two micro moths, which I believe this is called a bramble shoot moth. Can you see that tiny little one there? There's so many to show you. Right, I think that's enough. I'm getting quite overwhelmed by all of these, so I've got to start working my way through and writing them all down. And uh, gosh, what a lot, what a lot of moths. Fantastic to get three big hawk, hawk moth species like that. Brilliant. Okay, if there's anything else that's really spectacular, I might switch the camera back on and show you, but the rest of them, oh, well, they're all lovely really, but uh, I don't want to make a film that goes on and on for ages, so I think I'll pause there. Okay, thanks very much for watching. I'll um, speak to you again.